Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Welcome to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but pure and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Uh, yea, hath God said, ye shall, 
ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and sewed thick leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman which thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken... For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. Now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. As I said, I want to talk today on the origin of sin, and then what are the results of sin? And then what is the remedy of sin? First of all, we just read how after God had created Adam, the Bible says that God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. Man is different from the rest of God's creation in that man is the crowning work of God's creation, and in that God has made man in his own image. Not only does man have mind, emotion, and will, but man is body, soul, and spirit. Now the angels are mind, emotion, and will, but they're not body, soul, and spirit. And so man is a unique creature among God's creation. In a sense, the angels are close to the image of God, but they're not in the image of God as man is. And so, before Adam fell, God had created, if you read in Isaiah chapter 13, it talks about a beautiful angel, his name was Lucifer, and he created 
The Bible says when he created the angels that it was an innumerable amount of angels. We don't know how many angels. It may have been trillions of angels that God created. But there was one angel. There's different ranks of angels. There's cherubims, there's seraphims, there's living creatures, there's guardian angels. There's ranks of angels. And but the highest ranking angels are the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and people believe that Lucifer was an archangel. He was one of the highest ranking angels. And in Isaiah chapter 14, starting with verse 12, it talks about his fall, that he wanted to exalt his throne above the throne of God, that he wanted to be like the Most High. And then if you go to Ezekiel chapter 28 and you start reading at the 12th verse, it talks about Lucifer as being a beautiful angel and that he was lifted up in pride. And it talks about all of his musical abilities and his beauty. And the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 28, it says that he was in the Garden of Eden. And so when this serpent came to Adam and Eve, and God had put them in a beautiful garden, and a garden of paradise, and he just gave them one commandment. He said, out of all this garden you can eat of everything that's here, but there's one tree in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. The origin of man's sin, the origin of sin into the universe, dealt with Satan, Lucifer, who became Satan after his fall. But the origin of sin into the world happened through a man. His name was... And I would like to talk for a little bit about his sin. First of all, I would like to say about Adam's sin. See, the serpent came... The Bible says he was more subtle than any beast of the field. And it, Satan was able to use that serpent and indwell that serpent and speak to Adam. But first of all, I'd like to say about Adam's sin that it was a very foolish sin that Adam committed. It was a foolish sin that he committed. God had told him that in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam had nothing to gain by eating of this forbidden fruit. It was a foolish sin. And you know, every time we sin, it's very foolish. We're going against clear light and revelation. We're going against the commandments of God. And so when we sin against God, it's always very foolish. The Bible talks about a, a rich man who, he was a farmer, and he, his land produced great and he didn't even have a place to put all of his crops because his land had produced so great so he tore down his barns and he built greater and then after he built greater barns to store his grain he died and the bible says called him a fool it says thou fool this day shall thy soul shall be required of thee then who shall those things be which thou hast provided so is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. This man, the Bible calls him a fool because he was living for himself. And when we sin against God, we're just as foolish as Adam. Not only was Adam's sin a foolish sin, but it was a prideful sin. Just like Satan, the Bible says he was lifted up in pride because of his beauty. Satan came to Adam and Eve and he said, you'll be as gods if you eat of this tree. You'll be as gods, knowing good and evil. And it was very prideful. It wasn't a sin. Adam did not commit a sin that he thought would bring him downward. He thought it would bring him and elevate him. Like Satan. Satan wanted to be elevated. And so it was a very prideful sin. And every time we sin against God, there's always pride at the very heart of every sin we ever commit. There's always pride there. And then it was a covetous sin, the sin that Adam committed. It was covetous. 
The Bible says when the woman saw that the, the fruit was good, and it was a fruit to be desired to make one wise. Desired. It was covetousness. And so, just as with Lucifer, we saw that Lucifer was prideful, and he was covetous. He wanted to exalt his throne above the throne of God. And that is the heart of all sin. All sin, the heart of it, is covetousness and pride. The Tenth Commandment, when you go through the commandments, the Tenth Commandment says, Thou shalt not covet. And every time we sin, before we sin, there's always covetousness at the root. There's always covetousness at the root. The Bible says that every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, his own covetousness, and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they've erred from the faith. And so covetousness is always at the root of all sin. And we've all coveted. Before a person steals something, they covet first. First they look at it and they desire it. Before a person commits adultery, they covet first. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, if you so much as look upon a person and lust after, you commit adultery in your heart. And so Adam's sin was foolish, it was very prideful, and it was covetous. But what was the results of this sin? They took the fruit. Eve took the fruit. She began to eat it. She gave to her husband and he began to eat. What was the result? Well, first of all, the result of their sin was spiritual death. Just think of it, spiritual death. God said, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And Adam didn't die physically that day. But there was a part of Adam that died that day that you couldn't see with your eye. And it was on the inside. Spiritually, Adam died on the inside. And every one of us is spiritually dead outside of Christ. We're all spiritually dead outside of Him. We've inherited that from Adam. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We've all sinned against God, and we all have spiritual death. We've all inherited Adam's corrupt nature. You know, when Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, he said, roll away the stone, and they said, by this time he stinketh. There's death in that tomb. And on the inside of us, outside of Christ, there is a spirit that stinketh in the sight of God. It's dead. It needs to become alive. And Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He must be born again on the inside. He must have a new birth. And then Adam's eyes were opened in a sense, but they were closed in a sense. They were opened. The Bible says his eyes were opened and he knew that he was naked. There was a knowledge about his moral nakedness. Now... There was a little kid one day, and his father said to him, Son, the stove is burning, it's hot. Don't touch that stove. If you touch that stove, you'll burn yourself. But one day, the kid was, the dad was gone from the room. The stove was burning, and the wood stove. And he thought, I wonder what it'd be like to touch that stove. And he went over to the stove. And he tempted his mind with it. And all of a sudden he reached out and he touched the stove. And when he did, his flesh was seared. It was, it was burnt. Now that little child, as soon as he touched the stove, his eyes were opened. Experientially. Now he didn't just know it intellectually that that stove was hot. He knew it experientially. He had a knowledge by experience that the stove was hot. And so there is a knowledge that we have about sin that we couldn't have had we never sinned. But it's not a knowledge that we should have had or needed to have if Adam had never sinned. But there is a 
knowledge of our moral depravity and nakedness. Every one of us have it. Adam had it. The Bible says that God has put a knowledge inside of us. What kind of knowledge is it? It's called conscience. Con is with, science is knowledge, with knowledge. And what has God put in? Genesis, Romans chapter 2 verse 15 which says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. We all have a conscience. And our conscience either accuses us or it excuses us. It tells us that's okay or it tells us, no, that's a wrong thing to do. That would be a transgression against God. And people can sear their conscience. And they can even defile their conscience. God speaks to us and we say no to God. And then our conscience gets seared. Kind of like if you've ever watched a movie, an old western.